Hi, welcome to a code walkthrough um, for Watts 4000, the JavaScript applications course in the Watts Certificate Program at CLU. Well, tonight I'm going to be looking at using API data. And this really was the breakthrough for JavaScript applications was being able to access data outside of the browser. I mean, there really was no other way to do it, and we had the XML HTTP requests become available in, oh, I don't know, the late 90s, maybe, mid-90s, and that has evolved the way that we actually process data coming in, but essentially it's, it's based on that, the XML HTTP request. And this allows us to gather data up from other sources around the internet, and we sometimes call third-party APIs, so it's not our API <clears throat> that we're supporting necessarily, but there are some standards, the REST standard, and, and I hope you do read up on all of this um, because this is really important. And it will we'll be using APIs for the rest of the course. So in this in this week, we're going to be using um, we're going to be using the Data Muse API. And let me get the fork going here. And while that's forking. Uh, let's take a look at this. So the Data Muse API, there are no uh, requirements for keys or authentication. We really just call a get on our data. So if I look at, and this is all about finding words that are synonymous or um, that rhyme, that are somehow related to other words. And so there's the API is really just a get, which is really just like a browser request. So if I open up one of these API calls. You can see it's just this API datamuse.com slash words question mark and then we have the query string after the question mark and this is just standard HTTP request. It's a get request and then we have a variable ml um, which is the term that datamuse uses for meaning similar. So I'm looking at meaning similar to, to ringing in the ears and I get back an array of objects in JSON format. So I have all of the keys quoted, and then I have strings and numbers <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, nested arrays. But this is essentially the data that's going to come back to me. So I'll be processing data in a JSON format, which is great because I'm JSON is JavaScript object no notation and I'm coding in JavaScript. Well, before I start coding, though, um, let's get this cloned. So I've got this forked and we'll get this cloned. So let's see. We'll just clone this. And we'll open that up in Visual Studio and we'll get the npm install going because again this is view and we've got a number of dependencies. But before I start coding, I like to use Postman. So what I would do is grab one of these um, URLs and open up Postman. You can download this for free. There's information in the reading about it. And I'll just open up a tab and paste this URL in. And you can see that it has taken the query string key ML out and then the value ringing in the ears out. And note the plus. So when you're sending data over a get request um, in the URL, you replace spaces with the plus. Uh, you, you can't have spaces in there. So this sends out, this is the request that will be sent. And I could have you know, coded it like I could have said ML ringing plus in the ears. And Postman would turn that into the correct query string. And then I just click on send. And here I get back this array. Uh, and I'll have a word, I'll have a score, and then I'll have some tags. So this is, this is the API call that I'm going to be using. And um, let's get in and take a look at that. So I'll often do use the Postman before I start coding, just so I can kind of understand the pieces. Sometimes there is authorization tokens or headers that I need to include. And I'll always start here, and that will make it 
easier to see what's going on when I get to the code. So I've got a, an application here that has no components, but some view components. So, and we've got this Rhymesaurus. So it's gonna, this application is gonna allow us to create rhymes and meanings that are the same. And I have the application set up, let's see, right here. So this is, this is the completed app and this is what it runs like. So if I, if I say I wanna find a rhyme for ham, that is related to test. So it's going to rhyme with ham, but it's going to be somewhat related to a test. It's going to return exam, final exam, medical exam with, with <clears throat> ratings. So this is what I'm going after. I'm going to make this work right here. And right now, if I, if I, I've got my NPM installed, if I run the server, so I'm running NPM run serve, not the code will not be all hooked up because I have a number of to do's. So you can see if I put ham exam search, nah, nothing happens. And in fact, if you look at the errors, um, no errors, but but nothing happening and just everything kind of just on display. So let's go back and start putting in some code on these to do's. And first of all, we're just going to start here. Use a submit event handler. I'm going to close this. Use a submit submit event handler. Oops. To find words to handle this form submission. Okay, so what we want to do here is set up our submit handler using the VON directive. Submit. And we'll use the prevent so that we don't refresh the page and find words, that is the name of our function. So we haven't actually created it yet, but we're going to be creating a function called find words that will actually go out and make the call to get the words. And then we, let's see, add a VF conditional to make this result list show only if there are results and if the length is greater than zero. So here's our list of results. And well, right here we've got our, our input. So that looks like it's already set up and it's set up to, to, for a V model to rhyme, which is right now an empty string. So that's where you will enter the word that you want to rhyme with. <clears throat> and in this results, we don't want to show this unless we actually have results. So we'll use the VF directive and results so we want to we want the results to exist not you know right now they come in they're null so that will that will result in a test to false or falsy test and results dot length greater than zero so if I just if I just had results dot length greater than zero and I didn't test for results existing first this would throw an error because um, because that would be a null value and I'd be trying to access a property on that. Let's see if it shows. Yeah, so you can see length undefined. If you ever see errors like this, cannot read something property of undefined, that means that you've tried a dot syntax to access a property, but the object is null or undefined. So that's why we do the result. And that guarantees that if there's no result, we won't show it. And if there's a result, but it's empty, we won't show it. And this is what, what's called the, a short stop and meaning that it won't even try to test the second part, the next part, unless the first part passes. So that's our setup for the results. Um, the next thing we want to do is, so we're, we are showing this, if we're showing this, we want to iterate through it and show all of our results. So we're going to use the v4 directive and we'll just say item of results. So we're just going to go through the results array <clears throat> and I'm getting the, the syntax problem where it wants a key. So I'll do this index and I'll put a key in. All right, so we're pulling out, we're calling it item, each row of the array that's returned. 
and then we're going to output the word and so the word will be a mustache it's content word and we're going to output the score again we can use mustache item score okay so this is going to show us let's see we're still not hooked up to to anything so clicking on our search button it won't there's nowhere for it to go there's no find words available so we still have some more work to do um, we we also we have this ability to to do an else so we have the we have the v if so if the result we're saying if results and the result length greater than zero show the results but then we can show the no results um, with a v else if v else if equals so if results and results dot length equals zero so now we have the concept where we don't have a null result because we we got back an empty array but we since we have an empty array length of zero we didn't find any words so not, we did we made a query that returned nothing so now we get to say no words found please just search for to find more words um, and then finally we have so that's our else if to make the message show only if we get results and then finally we have a v if conditional to show only if there are errors so by chance we've done something to cause an error we want to show the error and that's going to be and that could happen with no results so those two things could happen together um, not ne not necessarily that they would but they could so um, errors dot length greater than zero so that's our test to say okay if we happen to get errors and we're gonna we have this errors array it's empty um, so it's pretty much always going to exist because we were initializing it but if we do get errors you'll see when we code the, the find we will be able to push them onto this array this errors array <clears throat> and then we can show them so if there happen to be more than one we can show them all and once again, we can use the v4 directive and error, let's do error index of errors. And we'll put a key equal index. Okay, so now if we look at our page, we shouldn't see, shouldn't see anything see property result not defined let's see results oh here result okay property result not defined on the instance let's see we have results let's just see result VF results and results.length. So yes, when we're testing, <clears throat> we need to use the name of the of this. The only time we can use result is when we're using it to name the items coming out of the array. So that should clear that up. Let's see. We still have one in there. Let's see. So results and results.length results and result oops results and result results and results dot length all right we're clear now we still can't do anything because we don't have a find words but we're set up we're not showing errors now because it's empty um, and we're not showing results either because we, we don't have any <clears throat> but we're ready to move down here so we've got the v4 output each error so here 
and errors happen to come in with with a message string so we're going to do error dot message and we'll try to take a look at that we'll try to simulate an error and that gives us our errors now we need to import axios so axios should have been loaded but sometimes you, it's, it sometimes it hasn't been loaded but here it is it, you can check any of your dependencies should show up in your package JSON under dependencies so dependencies are the dependencies for your application dev dependencies are dependencies for building the application so you know if we didn't have this here we could just run um, an npm um, npm install axios dash dash save and that would put it into this dependencies and it would install it but it looks like we've got it so since we've got it we can we can import it into the code so import axios from axios and that axios is gonna be the same name that you see in package json so these are the names when you say from, it's from these names. That's how they're named in NPM. They're guaranteed to be unique. NPM doesn't take a name unless it's, it's unique. So then, now we're ready to write our, um, our method. So we're going to put a comma and then our methods object. And in the methods object, we're going to create an Axio string that that request from this data muse words and what we're going to say is Axios get and then we'll just grab this API so we put our API in here and it's going to be quoted so we call the get and inside here, we set up two things. Oh, wait. Here we're just going to set up a param string. So params are the parameters that this API expects. <clears throat> and these parameters map to these um, query strings. So ML is ML, SP these different and you can see they're defined down here so means like sounds like spell like so you can use any of these parameters and then what we'll do in the code is we'll set the parameter as a key and this dot phrase okay where do we get that that comes from our input so up here we, we've got bound to our model this uh, phrase with a search button. Let me just take a look over here. We seem to be in a broken state right now. Let's see. Well, let's finish building this this function. We're kind of in the middle of this. Um, so we have our get and we, we get and we give it a URL. Um, an address for the API and then we set up params and we have a phrase and then we have rel ry and it's the rhyme so this dot rhyme and again this is in our and this is one of our inputs too so we have a rhyme and then we have a phrase. So we, we have a V model set up to rhyme and a V model set up to phrase. So we can just pull those out using this. And oh, this is wrong. Rel rye. So the, these are the these are the query string values that we get from looking at the API docs. And we're mapping so means like goes with the phrase and rel rye goes with the rhyme. Okay, it looks like we do have a problem here. Let's see. So we have the get and this, and then after the get, oh, I'm sorry, I see the problem. We didn't set up a function. So we have, 
we need find words function. So this method. So the method is a key for an object that contains functions. And the functions are defined by providing the name of the function, colon, and then function. So by setting that up, we should be getting that. Let's see. So we have the, OK, we need one more here, I think. Let's try and format that. It can get a little confusing. Uh, looks like we've got that compiled now. So let's just match this up. So we have our method. Let's put this down there. We have our method, which is an object. We have our function, which is a key. The value is a function. And then we have our axios get, which is going to actually supply the information to send out on the internet to get the data. Um, but then we need to set up what we're going to do when the data comes back. And what we're doing, what we're, Axios returns what's known as a promise. So the way that this kind of asynchronous data fetch works is you send your command out. It's going to take some amount of time, depending on the server. And when it comes back, it's going to kind of say, hey, I'm back here. Why don't you check me out to see if I succeeded or failed, and then do something with, with that. So there's going to be a success and a fail. And a promise always provides an operation for both of those. So um, we're going to deal with the success case. And in the su success case, we, we're going to name a variable response. You could name it data. You could name it whatever you want. But it's going to contain, it's going to contain the object of a successful fetch. And we're using the arrow key. So this is actually, we're, we're creating a function. We're passing a function into the then to deal with the data that's come back successfully. And so what we want to do is bind or reference that data with response dot data. And what's happening there is um, the results is our, is our own variable that we've bound to our view. And we want to set whatever data comes back so we can examine that response in the debugger. And, but what we're after is the data property of that response. There's some other information like the status code and, and whatnot. But that's what's going to, so if this will, we're going to send this request out. When it comes back, if it's successful, this data will contain our, the data we want to bind to our view. And we'll just pull that out of the response. And then we're going to also set up something to catch an error. So we're going to use catch. And our error will pass, will we'll capture the error as a bit of data and set up a function to, to handle that. And this is really like, I'm just going to make a little note here so you can see that this, this error function is really as if we'd have written an anonymous function like, um, you know, function error. And then, so, same thing, the arrow syntax, you're going to see as we work through some of these that we, there are benefits to using the arrow syntax in terms of data scoping. And so we like to use that rather than using the function. But anyway, this, so we're going to, if there's an error, it's going to automatically call this error function. And then we're going to just take this dot errors, our own errors array, and push the error on that. So you can see it's a very small amount of code to do a whole bunch of work. And at this point, so we're just kind of following. You can see that we're just following the then clause, the catch clause. But this basically should get us running. So we've got our, now all of this code, I just want to let you know so you're not worried about copying it and everything, that it's all located at the bottom of this project explanation in the book. So if you look at this wrapping up, all this code is set up there. You can read it right out of there. I'm just kind of walking you through it here. So let's see if that works. And we will go to our view app and try our test, which is rhymes for ham related to test. And we got a whole bunch of things. 
That's weird though because we got things that don't rhyme with ham. So I think there might be a problem in there. And we're going to have to kind of look at that. So my query ran, but I got back a lot of data, a lot of examples that don't match what I'm trying to get. Remember in my, when I showed you the beginning, we only got back three things and they all had the word exam in them. So let's take a look at what went wrong here. So if we look at the console, there weren't any errors, but if I go to sources, since I've got the view dev tools installed, I can drill down and find my code and I can actually put a breakpoint. I'm just clicking in the margin to set a breakpoint there. And I'm going to check and make sure that it's picking up my phrases correctly. So I'll just hit search and sure enough, it'll stop at that point. And I can just hover over phrase and see that, yeah, picked up test for the means like, but it's undefined for the rhyme. And by golly, when I look close at it, I could see that I made a typo. So let me go back in there and fix that typo. So down here in the find data, I have a typo. So rhyme, R-H-Y-M-E. Okay, so let's try that again. Rhymes for exam related to test. And now I've got my test and exam in there. Let's run it. Oh, now it's saying no, nothing found. Well, that's crazy. I was supposed to put ham in there to test it. Ah, and there it is. Got all of our three. So that's looking good. And if I look at view, what do I have over here? I've got my route. So that looks good. And um, we're good for that. And it looks like we're getting the right answer. So let's go back and see what we need to do next. So obviously, too, you're going to want to clean up all of these to-dos. I leave them around, but I definitely will be looking for that to be cleaned up. We got that running. If we go back and look at our project, um, well, we should do a few tests, make sure like things that don't return anything give us the expected results. So if I do orange, rhymes with orange, not very many people, things do, and taxes, related to taxes. No words found, so I've, I've hit that if where it's not an error, but I, I definitely didn't find anything, so I have, an, I have a result, but it's empty with no error. But what if I make this make an error? Like what if I <clears throat> change something in here, like make that Q? Okay, so now I've messed up my... What happens if I have an error uh, sending my request? So let's try rhymes with ham test. Ah, I get a 404 and that 404 is a status for not found. So that seems to be working. Let's go back and fix that. So now I, I think I'm pretty good and I've got the router was set up for me. I don't have to do anything. That's my default. Um, but the next thing that I need to do is to create another another component that uses data muse. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So we're going to create this new component um, and we're given some some tests here. Find adjectives given a noun. Maybe we'll just try one of these then. <clears throat> so we're going to have to change our form a little bit. And, and then we're going to modify our search a little bit. And then we're going to want to link these two together. So first of all, let's, let's say we're not inspired, so we're just going to do find adjectives given a noun. Um, so we'll, we'll create a new component, and it's going to be routed to, so we're going to put it in views. And so we'll create a file called um, adjective. What is it? Find adjectives for a given noun. Okay. Adjective for noun dot view. All right. So we'll have it. And what I'm going to do to kick this off is I'm just going to grab all the code in Rhyme Resource and I'm just going to rework it. So again, quick and dirty, but I'm going to big chance I'll have an error, but I'm just going to go for it. 
So I'll change adjective for noun. And that means I need to change if there's anything down here that used Rhymosaurus adjec adjec adjective for noun. Okay, can double check that. Make sure Rhymosaurus is not used anywhere else. Rhymosaurus, oh, name. So, adjective for noun. Okay, so we've got we've got the we've got the name Rhymosaurus covered. So we should be able now to go to our router and set up another route. So we'll import adjective for noun from at views adjective for noun. And then we'll add a route, which will be path and adjective for noun. Name is, I like, I like to use lowercase. I'm sorry, I just, I just like lowercase there. Adjective for noun and component adjective for noun. So I'm mapping a path and a name to my component. And this means that now the slash, of course, will be the home if I don't enter any, any path. Um, but now if I go back out to my code and I enter adjective for noun. Okay, it looks pretty much the same because I haven't changed any of the what you can see. Let's go change, make some changes in there. So, um, bind an adjective, adjective for noun, for a given noun. Okay, we'll just make sure that find an adjective for a given noun. And I see Rhymosaurus is probably coming from our app view. So let's go take a look at that. Yeah, let's just say, um, we'll put that right into Rhymosaurus. So we'll just, we don't want it. We got to put it in the within the div on the first template, um, so that it stays in the template. So now I should probably have two of those. Rhymosaurus, yes. Um, and so what we're going to do is change the app view so it's more general. Like, um, let's just try fun with data muse. Okay, so this this is coming from app view. This is coming from our component, and this is our original um, ham test. And then if we go to adjective for noun, where we have the fun with data muse, but we don't have a we don't have a header. So there's an h1. I think we need to make this an h2 to be kosher with HTML and then adjective for noun I can put in an h2 here that is like adjective for noun. And I hope you're more creative than this. I'm just doing this for an example. And we now we don't we don't need two two numbers. We just need to enter one adjective and then or we need to enter one noun, and then that should bring back adjectives. So we only need one. We don't need two data thing data sets. We just need type equals text, and uh, we'll keep results and errors, but we'll get rid of one of these, and we'll just keep phrase. So input phrase. And the phrase, well, let's be more specific. We're going to input, we're going to have a noun. So we'll make this into a noun. 
All right, so we're setting up our input form. Uh, we have a V on submit, find words, find adjective for noun. We have bound the input to a data item called noun, and we have a button to submit. We have, we're still dealing with results. I don't think we need to change that at all. And we still want to report nothing found, and we still want to report errors. Now, we also need to change our find words. And if we go back to data muse and look at that, so I'm using adjective. What, let's see, I got that idea from here. Let's make sure this works. If I come over here, let's just paste that in there. Okay, so adjective for noun. You give it the word car and it gives you new, motor, street, electric, all, all kinds of things that you might use to describe a car, adjectives that you might use on that car. So I need a rel underscore JJB, JJB, and then I need this to be my noun. So I'm pulling this again <clears throat> out of my form, bound to my data, and I don't need this phrase anymore. So I just have one query string this time, rel jjb equals a, a noun. And this is going to hopefully give me back a bunch of adjectives or an error. So I think that's all I need to do. Let's go try and run that. So adjective, find an adjective for a given noun. So we'll enter car, search, uh oh, network error. So let's take a look here. Uh, what kind of an error is this? And what I like to do to find errors is I'll just put a breakpoint where it's catching the error. And we'll put that in there. Let's also just make sure, oh, it looks like I still have that phrase. I thought I took that out. Let's see. Adjective for noun. Let's make sure we refresh that, that we get that. Oh, this is Rhymosaurus. Okay, that's, we need to go find our new, our new one. So we're not concerned about Rhymosaurus, we're concerned about adjective for noun. So adjective for noun, pretty much the same code. We'll put our, let's make sure that it's using words. Yes, words and, and Okay, so we have adjective for noun. We have this dot noun. We'll make sure that's there. And then we'll put some breakpoints where we expect to get data. And we'll put car, search. This dot noun is car, so that looks good. Oh, this time it is working. We're getting back a list of data. So, but we have something wrong because it's not putting any of that out. So let's let's just take a look at what we've got in here in our in our loop. So oh before we add word and score let's just make sure that we're getting that back with our results. So search and we do have word and score. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're, we're looking at this. We saw it ran, we saw it return data, but it's not outputting anything. So take a look at console. Oh yes, there's some errors. Property or method results not defined on the instance. So did I accidentally remove that? I did. So I need to get that results back as null. And I want the noun to be actually an empty string. So now, and I don't need phrase. So I didn't quite have my data set up right. Let's do these two together and we'll do this one, the noun. So we only have, we have our same res oh, results because um, that's what we're going to capture our data in. We have errors, which is where we're going to push our errors. And then noun is just going to be an empty string that we are binding to our form. Let's try that again. So we'll refresh this. 
We'll keep an eye on the console here. Car, and I can turn off that breakpoint. And there we go. We get a bunch of adjectives for cars. So that looks pretty good. So we have one more thing to do, which is we've been asked to link these two pages together. Uh, router, uh, the route link. Route link. Route. Yeah, router link here. We need to set up our router link so that, and if you wanted for a stretch, you could actually create, like maybe you'd create a, an actual nav bar in app view. But to just satisfy the requirements, we'll have each page linked to the other. And so we can do like a, parent, a paragraph maybe. And in that paragraph, we will set up a router link. And we'll have Rhymosaurus go to the, oops. We'll have Rhymosaurus go to uh, app for noun. So that I'm just using whatever, oh, adjective for noun. Okay, so we're just pull. We're just having each one link to the other. Did I spell that right? Let's see. Adjective for noun. Let's fix that. Adjective for noun. And so Rhymosaurus is going to go to adjective for noun. And sometimes I just to to make it checkable, I just search for it, and that looks good. Adjective for noun. Good. And then we want to say adjective for noun. So this way, if you're on this page, if you're on the home page, you, oh, that doesn't look good. Adjective for noun, let's see. Router link two equals, all right, two equals and then back to our code. So now, if we click on adjective for noun, it takes us to, add to this page. And now let's just grab that link and we'll put one of those links. Let's see, we'll grab the whole paragraph, format it, and we're gonna put that under the header here. But in this case, we will go to rhyme I can't type that. I'm going to just go to the router and grab that. Oh, just go to the home path. So here we can just go home. And home rhyme r h y m e s a u r. This is a made up word, I think. Okay. So now we're back here and so here we have a link to the Rhymosaurus, and here we have a link to adjective for noun. And when we're on adjective for noun, we can enter a noun, and we get back all the adjectives, lots of them. And when we go to Rhymosaurus, we can enter rhymes for ham, test. We can get back a pair like that. All right. So a lot to learn there. There's, you know, be sure to work with Postman. That really helps you to know your data and know that your API is going to work for you. And then just working through the forms and the routers um, and then using the route links. And again, all of the code to set up one of these is at the bottom of this uh, page in the book. So I'm just looking at this chapter 10 using API data. Okay, well enjoy coding and I look forward to seeing your new component page. Hey, before I sign off, let me take care of pushing this up, building it and pushing it up. So npm run build, we'll get this built into our docs folder. And once we get that done, um, sometimes you don't have to do this, but sometimes I like to just test out my built file, so I'll open it with live server. So this is a different port, but 
since these are static files, I can do this and I can say rhymes with rhymes with ham related to test. Ah, and I've got a network error. So let's take a look at what happened there. Oh, you know what it is? Um, so there's a little bit of caching that goes on with the, uh, let's see, yes, you will see this cores error. And that's because it remembers the last, the last time that you made the call and it kind of cached it. So cores is something we're going to hear about more as we work through these APIs. But it, it, it's kind of remembering that you did it with, the, with, with a different port and now it only wants to serve you on that first port. And the way to get rid of that um, memory is to, way to remove that caching is go to network, click on that disable cache. I always leave that open. As long as you're in DevTools and you have that, that disable cache open, when you refresh, it should remove any caching. So let's hope that works. Let's try that again. Test rhymes with ham. Okay, and so that worked again. And that can happen to you when you deploy up to GitHub too. Like it worked fine for you when you were testing uh, down in your uh, local host 127, but as soon as you deploy it, all of a sudden it stopped working. If you see that happening, open up your um, dev tools, go to network tab, click on the disable cache and refresh it. And I think it will work for you. So that looks good to me. And then we have the adjective for noun and that seems to be working too. So I'm happy with that build. So I think I'll push it up. Get status, get add dot get commit m add code and build get push. All right, looks good. And then I'm going to just use my F1 open in GitHub project. And I will go out and set up my GH pages. So docs save. I'll set up the HTTP and refresh. I'm just going to try and get this out to GitHub IO so I can make sure that's running. And we may see that we get a network error. So ham test, yes. But if I open it up and I go to network, disable, clear, ham test. All right, looks good. So yeah, that's a, that's a good lesson to learn. Sometimes that you can clear that cores error by just, just running that. Um, there can be even worse cores errors, but we'll, we won't worry about that right now. So I think we're good there. Let's grab that URL and we'll update. We don't want the SU web dev. Let's put that in there and we're good. And then you want to turn in this pair of URLs, your, your code and your rendered code. All right. Happy coding.